500 move of terraced line tier, uh, growing potato, and this has increased the locals income by 80 million yuan in total. And this is Chongyang County, Wucheng uh, village of Hubei province. And right now, if you take a look at the core field, you will see a lot of farmers busy with harvesting the corns. A lot of the vis visitors are also busy helping the locals. And uh, here you can grow uh, two rounds of uh, corns one year. And this is also using a otter-based production. Uh, each and every move of land can bring about an income of five to 8,000 per year. So this is where you can see the beautiful scenery of Lotus, and this is Tangzhuang village of uh, Anhui province. Here we have 2,000 mu of lotus field. You can see that this is a combination of many different colors of lotus flowers. The locals call it the uh, space lotus, and this lotus industry has dramatically improved the local economy. And the locals have already built a eco-tourism chain evolving on lotus. And what you now see is Shizhuang village of uh, Shanxi province. So this is one particular uh, flower uh, which features three to four harvests one year. By processing this uh, flower, you can uh, generate roughly 2,000 tons of uh, livestock for the uh, house boundaries that we raise in farmers' homes. In farmers' homes, so this is of a great economic benefit to the local farmers. Good morning. Uh, welcome to our program entitled Walking into Village and Taking a Glance at the Prosperous Life. And today we are going to focus on how science and technology empowers farmers. As President Xi Jinping has pointed out that the modernization of the country is indispensable from the modernization of agriculture. And we have to pay attention to agricultural talents and also pay attention to science and technology in agriculture. Science and technology are injecting great momentum to agriculture, and they have become a very important tool uh, promoting the modernization of agriculture in China. Today, we have uh, journalists in Hunan, in Yunnan, Anhui province, in Sichuan province, in Jiangxi, in Hubei, and also in Chongqing municipality. And they are at different villages, and they are going to take you on a tour of this great, empowering journey by science and technology. And first, we're going to bring you to uh, Tang Fu Chao village. And this is the home for transplantation of uh, uh, fruit trees. The Tang Fu Town villages has already become a benchmark in fruit tree transplantation. Our jur journalist told us that uh, recently there is a new development of this industry. And now let's get connected to Li Yanjie, who is our journalist um, in Hunan province. So tell us about what you see there. <coughs> All right. So if I ask you a question, how many different ages does the tree have? So you may tell me that a tree can only be 13 years old, and there can only be an age. But let me tell you, this is a transplanted tree, and this stem is three years old, and then the branches on this part, this is two years old. And if I go to further top, it's only one year old. So in one tree, there are different ages because there are different plants and fruits. So this is the uh, kiwi fruit, and there are red ones and also green ones. And the red ones are sold at a more expensive price. But uh, one of the years um, in the past, and there was a 
a big disaster and the price dropped significantly. So that is why they have switched to green uh, kiwi fruits. So after multiple years of exploration, they made a decision to uh, make another challenge with the red uh, kiwi fruits. So how do you ensure that this can survive? And they uh, decided to embrace science and technology. So they uh, learned upon some experience from uh, Sichuan and Yunnan province, and they simply uh, built a shield on top of the orchard. And if you look further, and there are a lot of uh, green grass, you may wonder what is the benefit of that. Actually, this is very good. Three years ago, there were no grass. Uh, over the past three years, there were agriculture engineers who are stationed here and who try to uh, plant grass here. And this shows that the soil is very, uh, uh, very uh, fertile here. And so it shows that the kiwi uh, fruits here are green and eco fruits. And now let me uh, switch to the soil. And beneath the soil, we have uh, pipelines that can support drip irrigation. According to the engineers, and they will be able to bring whatever elements that are needed by the soil so that they will bring about standard and intelligent uh, watering and irrigation uh, system to this land. So what is the result of such um, actions? Now let's just take a look. And uh, this is the red colored kiwi fruits and this is the first year of harvest and you can see how many kiwi fruits we have on one branch. I was told by the farmers that on each tree there can be hundreds of kilos and next year one tree can bring you about 1,000 kilos of kiwi fruits. Uh, here they have a 6,000 mu of uh, kiwi fruits and uh, half of that is a red kiwi fruit, which is sold at a more expensive price. That will bring a lot of income and revenue to the locals. And the local villagers, they are very bold, they are very flexible. They think ways to uh, increase their income. Uh, they do not just sell fruits, they also sell the technology of uh, plant transplantation. So they are moving to the backward part of the industrial chain, and they are fully engaged, and they are able to dramatically increase their income in the coming years. So thank you very much. We have actually uh, rec we have actually covered the development of uh, Tangpu Tan Village, and in 2003, President Xi Jinping actually vi paid a visit to uh, this village, and he said that to help eradicate poverty and increase people's income, we have to combine the development of agriculture with the uh, protection of the environment. Over the years, Anchan Bhutan Village has remembered the instructions by President Xi Jinping. In 2006, the village was elevated out of poverty. And last year, the per capita income of the village reached more than 20,000 yuan per year. And as was mentioned earlier, that there was a, a female team of uh, kivit uh, planters. And now let's let's take a look at what they are doing and helping with the locals get rid of poverty. So she is the head of the uh, women team for kiwi fruits harvest. She has rented 20 mu of land, and right now uh, she has. Uh, 30 mu of land for the uh, breed. So what you should have is a seizure like this and also a big hat like what I'm wearing right now. Um, I'm already very dark, but I have to protect my face from the sunshine. I cannot go darker. So this is the breed of the kiwi fruits. And what I do is to transplant those braids to those uh, big thicker stems. Through transplantation, we can simply change the species of the uh, kiwi fruits. And this is actually very cheap. And each stem is only sold at roughly one yuan. But if the market is uh, performing very well, um, the price can double and maybe triple. The technology of Tian Xiangqun 
was from a master when she was、uh, studying, and she said that transplantation is just like a surgery, and it's quite it is quite normal that、uh, you get hurt. So can you hold straight with this finger? No, I cannot. It has already deshaped.、Uh, over the years,、uh, in spring they do the transplantation. In summer they grow the、uh, kiwi fruits, and in autumn they harvest and sell the fruits to all across the country. So when everybody is busy,、uh, when everybody is at, at ease, enjoying their、um, uh, leisure time, and we are focused here. Busy with、uh, plantations,、uh, so these women they travel to many different provinces, Yunnan, Sichuan, and uh, uh, Guangxi, and、uh, a lot of them they have obtained a certificate. And、uh, with the technology that they own, they can earn a total of eight million yuan as the team. So we have many different、uh, types of talents and engineers, and I believe and respect it. Because I'm carrying the title as a agriculture engineer, and I feel very proud, and I feel respected. Well, I would be lying if I tell you this is not hard work, but let me tell you, we feel very satisfied in the bottom of our hearts.、Uh, it's a privilege that we can be part of the team of transplantation, and I can tell you, when you are counting the cash. It's such a great feeling. And those sisters, they work together, they travel together, and they become rich together. And Tian Xianquan also found her love when she was doing her job, and she met her husband because of her job. And、uh, Their son and、uh, this year got enrolled by university, and I believe that this job provided me a lot of experience. I got a chance to travel around. I got a very good income. <coughs> What has this technology brought you? Money. It's money I got. You know, I got money. I got to、uh, spend on whatever I want. I built my house. I'm living a better life. It's very good. All right. Now let's、uh, kick into today's、uh, village dialogue. Uh, we are going to later bring you to two、uh, villages and the、uh, important breeding centers.、Uh, one is the horticulture breeding center in Yunnan.、Uh, here we have a village that is home to one of the most important、um, horticulture breedings. And another、uh, village is Liu Qi in Anhui Province. And the Xiao County is the largest production center of peppers. So our journalists they have been there for a couple of days, and they are online already. And、uh, they're gonna have a dialogue between flowers and peppers. So first, let's give the floor to Yunnan. All right, thank you very much. You can see that I'm standing among. An ocean of flowers. So they are、uh, blossoming. So I'm surrounded by those beautiful flowers. And here on this shelf, you can see those、uh, very flash、uh, tulips that have been just、uh, picked from the、uh, field. And you can see that all the flowers they are growing in the greenhouse, which we can achieve. Integrated control, and when the temperature is very high, we can spray water, and when there is too strong sunshine, we can automatically、uh, cover the、uh, shield. And when the water needs water, and we can automatically initiate the irrigation system. So everything is automated. And also here, you cannot see any soil because this is soilless. 
plantation of the flowers. Then how to guarantee the irrigation? You can see that this white color tube and this is simply uh, bringing water to the flower. And also uh, at the bottom of each flower, we have a sensor that measures the uh, water level of the bottle. And you can see that we have a big bar. And that is basically for recycling. Because without water, the flower won't be able to grow. But when we water or irrigate the um, flower, there will be redundant water. So that large and very long bar is simply for recycling the water. And 90% of the water here can be recycled. And this system is very suitable for the growth and plantation of flowers. And we are building a small climate environment. Uh, I'm standing at a greenhouse that is equivalent to Chanimua. And this is the size of two uh, football fields. Here we are growing African uh, chrysanthemums. According to experts, it takes roughly three to four years for per harvest. And you can see that they are in very good shape. And uh, each uh, flower stem will be able to give you one bunch of flower. And uh, one bunch of flower can be sold uh, between one and five yuan, depending on the uh, market uh, trend. So this is the African chrysanthemum. You can see that we have 20 to 30 different types of uh, flowers. So within one greenhouse, we can grow many different types of flowers. But a very, a very important task of this greenhouse is breeding and plantation. So when we uh, cultivate the breed, then it will be introduced elsewhere. So what are the specific uh, flower species we have here? Uh, let me uh, keep you on hold because I have a colleague who is staying at uh, Anhui. And let me ask my colleague, so how many species do you have there? Do you have more species of pepper than what I have here with flowers? Well, this is truly impressive, impressive, and uh, it's a colorful world that you are at. But here, I'm uh, standing in an ocean of uh, peppers. You can see that all of them are pepper, and on top of each uh, pepper fruit, there is one information board detailing the species and the type of the pepper. I can tell you that we are growing 173 different types of uh, pepper. They look different in shape. They also taste differently. In this couple of days, they are becoming uh, ripe. And there are a lot of precipitation over the past few days. And to avoid uh, precipitation, you can see that our farmers are busy picking peppers from the stamps. And you can see that they have uh, arranged a uh, flower bunch with different types of peppers. And you can see that all of, all of them are peppers. And the, there are big ones, uh, thin ones, yellow ones, and green ones. And let me just uh, take out some and give you a detailed introduction. And here we have a sweet pepper. It's very big. It's not very uh, spicy, and so this is very good for salad. And this is the smaller uh, type of pepper. If you know uh, pepper, and you know that this is very spicy. <coughs> Any ordinary human being can just swallow one uh, big pepper like this one, but for the small ones, uh, you won't be able to handle that easily. But here on this side, this is uh, very long, and this is not for eating. And this is not edible. And this is uh, the species that can give you the color elements, which you can use in uh, lipsticks. So if you come to Xiaoxian, can you buy a whole variety of different peppers? Well, let me tell you that they don't sell directly. And those uh, pepper farmers, they will pick them and then transport them to a processing center of the village and where the seeds and skin will be taken out. 
So what they do is that they sell the braids of the pepper, and a lot of the um, pepper skin they will be processed into pepper sausages, and eventually you will have some pepper braid, and I can tell you each of them, each particle of that is sold at 0 0.3 yuan. And for this bag alone, it's sold roughly at 350 yuan. And I can tell you there is a short supply of this, and if you want to buy, you have to book one year in advance. So now I think you have gained some basic knowledge about the pepper industry in Xiaoxian County. Here they have been doing that for 30 years, thanks to very sound geological conditions. Xiaoxian today has already been rated as the number one county in China for breeding of pepper. Here in this county, they have roughly 10,000 greenhouses like this. And I can tell you, out of every three pepper, one of them is from Xiaoxian County. And they have here in this county 300 different species of pepper. And each and every year, the number is growing by four to five. And they are sold very well nationwide, and some of the breeds are exported to South Korea and also to Southeast Asia. The locals are leading a better life uh, these days. Traditionally, if you grow wheat and uh, maize, you can only make 1,000 yuan, 2,000 yuan, but right now they are growing pepper, and they can make 20,000 yuan per year. So these are not seeds of pepper, and these are the soft gold that can bring about great fortune to the locals. So all right, so what do you feel after seeing this uh, bunch of flower made of pepper? Which one do you think is more beautiful? Well, it's a very hard comparison to make, but here in our studio, we have already some duplicate of your uh, works. And I believe that the uh, flower made of uh, pepper looks very uh, reddish, and the real flower is very colorful here. Well, if I have to choose one, I will choose um, the bunch of flower by my side. But then I will choose the flower made by pepper. So this is, it looks very tasty, and I know that this is very popular among the locals. And the locals, they would send gifts of uh, pepper flowers to their friends. And they would also send this to their love, to their boyfriend and girlfriend. And because in Chinese, um, pepper pronounced uh, you know, a little bit similar to love. So here you can see that we also have a, a green onion at the very center of the pepper flower. And now let me talk about the bunch of flower here. And I believe that one of the stems is, it looks very fake, but it's so real. And this is called the uh, colorful citrus flower. And this is one type of chrysanthemum. And within one bunch of chrysanthemum, uh, there are many different colors. You may think this is fake, but I can tell this is real. And you have to inject different color colors of nutrients so that roots can absorb the elements and then eventually you'd get such colorful uh, flower and I won't talk more details because uh, that will be related to the industrial secret and also we have uh, 26 different colors in this bunch of flower and that represents the 26 uh, ethnic groups in Yuna so this is uh, conveying a very good meaning so now let me turn to this uh, pepper flower. I told you about this uh, pepper that is not very uh, spicy. And the red one is giving you these elements for lipsticks. And I believe that if you use a lipstick like this, uh, you will look very beautiful. So we have many different types of pepper and flowers. And behind those are technologies and science. We have been talking for quite a number of uh, minutes, and now let's uh, hand it back to our colleague in Yunnan, to uh, Liu Wenjie, and tell us more about the flowers that you see there. 
when we were uh, connecting live streaming, a lot of the farmers, they are picking the African chrysanthemum. After that, they're going to sort them out according to their species. It's very fragile. So when you package them, you have to be very meticulous and careful. And within each package, there are only 10 bunches. And after that, it will be shipped across the nation. I'm talking about Yunnan. Uh, flower is like its business card. Here we have Yunnan University and also Yunnan University of Agriculture. And they are working closely together with those, uh, these universities, and they have brought 200 talents and, and agriculture engineers from across the country. And right now, they feature here they have uh, 18 different agriculture patents, and they are growing 531 different types of flowers. And I can tell you that with the breeding, breeding technology here, each and every year, they can come up with 20 to 30 new uh, flower types. This industry has also helped expand the uh, uh, land sites of uh, flowers by 20 to 30. And now let's uh, watch a short video clip to know more about this village that is surrounded by flowers. So the flower town looks very beautiful from this angle. So this is the VI camera and from our lens. You may think that you are surrounded by an ocean of flowers, uh, red, purple, green. Can you believe that there are 3,000 species of flowers and they are uh, occupying your eyes and it's just too many flowers for your eyes. But don't worry, you can use our science and technology tools to appreciate the beauty of flowers. So now let's take a look at the village from a 720 degrees uh, perspective, uh, walking at the pathways of the villages. And if you look at the walls, the uh, painting flowers. So this is a village and town decorated by flowers. Walking on the pathways of the town, you will be uh, smelling the flowers, and you will also see flowers growing on both sides and also on the wall. So this is the village surrounded by flowers, and after that, let me bring you more species about flowers. One of the key functions of this center is to breed and cultivate the seed of flowers. And here you can see some very representative uh, types of African chrysanthemums. After years of research, they have roughly 3,600 different species of chrysanthemum chrysanthemum. And this is the seven color chrysanthemum, uh, which the uh, host just showed you and as was introduced there are actually 26 different colors. And in Yunnan, we also have 26 different minority ethnic groups. So they are representing the different colors of the costumes of those ethnic groups. And they're not dyeing the uh, flower directly with the uh, color elements. And they are actually injecting uh, color elements and nutrition uh, nutrients to the uh, stem and then gradually uh, when it becomes uh, ripe it will show different colors very naturally and this is such a harmonious and beautiful scene so after the colorful appreciation of all those uh, flowers and do you feel satisfied and now let's bring you back to the packaging center and you can see that the uh, about to finish their work of the day. So after packaging, that will be shaped to different parts of the country. And if you have placed an order, follow that order. In Yunnan, flowers are not just for appreciation, and they can also be edible. And over the couple of days, we have taken some video, and this is how the locals make 
a flower, um, a flower cakes. You can see that flour can be used in many different dishes. So, do you want to try some of the flour dishes here? I can't wait to uh, travel to Yunnan and <coughs> travel to Yunnan and to uh, have a glance at the uh, flowers and also take a taste of the flower dishes. So, Tang Fei, did you see that? Can you compete with uh, the flowers with your pepper? Well, no matter it is the flowers on my side or the flowers in Yunnan, I believe that behind those stories are science and technology. Uh, they have to constantly engage in innovation to come up with different species. I'm here at the pepper breeding um, center, and the engineers here, they engage in hybrid for those uh, pepper uh, breed. So here in Xiaoxian, we have more than 10 uh, research institutes. Each enterprise will be able to come up with a very uh, unique brand. And uh, here, according to statistics, we have more than 100 hybrid breeds, but only 40 to 50 of them are pushed to the market. So if you are taking 40, 50 out of 1,000, you can imagine how high quality they are. And now let me give you another video clip. So this is a pepper eating competition. <laughs> so the standards of the competition is very simple. First you uh, look at the shape, you measure the length. So for example, this one is 20. 8 centimeters and it's 4 centimeters wide. And there's another measurement, which is to measure the thickness of the skin. And this one is only 0 0.4 centimeters. So how about this one? This is sweet. Well, you can eat this as a fruit. There are uh, sweet peppers, there are fragrant peppers, and you can just smell to tell what kind of uh, pepper it is. Only people in Hunan and Jiangxi can handle the peppers with a uh, spicy degree of more than 1,000 units. I cannot stand this. so. Two of the other functions of pepper is that, as you have learned earlier, lipsticks, the uh, red color elements comes from pepper. And also when it is uh, too spicy, you can spray them to the coating of uh, underwater uh, fiber lines. So I will give each one of you one pepper, and now, now let's see uh, which one can handle the most spicy one. Well, you are handling pretty well. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. So you are undoubtedly the champion of this competition. So this one has a, uh, a spicy uh, degree of more than 50,000 units. All right, after this uh, video clip, I think you have already got a conclusion which one is the champion. And here the villagers in Liu Qi, they can beat a lot of uh, people in terms of the quantities and types of pepper that they have tasted. Traditionally, uh, breeding is not very precise. Uh, right now, it's different because each year there are experts and scholars and technicians from universities 
on the one hand, they can measure very precisely about the sites and different contents of uh, color elements and also different proteins in the pepper. So how do you measure the level of spiciness? I was told by the experts that they have to bring the pepper back to their laboratory and they have to put them on very high precision equipments. And that will give you a very precise result telling you how spicy the pepper is. Over the past two years, An Xiaoxian is working together with Anhui Technology University and also Anhui Research Center for Agriculture. And their target is to shorten the production cycle of pepper. Traditionally, you have to uh, try with a breed for six years, but right now, the breeding cycle can be shortened to one year and a half. In addition, these technicians and scientists, they are making it easier for uh, pepper breeding. The most of the time consuming um, process is the artificial hybrid, and traditionally you have to rely on seven labors per day for seven moves of land. But right now, with automation technologies, we only require two labors. And this is a combination between industry, research, and academia. The system is playing a very important role. And with their efforts, the uh, breeding bank of uh, Anhui now has more than 2,000 different types of breed. And this guarantees that Xiaoxian is taking the lead of the country in terms of pepper breeding. The breeding efforts are going on each and every year. And talking about pepper breeding, there is one very important element, and that is that they are not just focusing on breeding. According to the planning of the local authority, they want to expand their cooperation to more universities, and they want to bring more enterprises here so that they can attract more um, red elements from the pepper so that they can gradually increase the added value of the pepper. And over the past few days uh, with our discussion, and they, want, they have gained a little bit about the flower in Yunnan and in the future, and they want to bring the flowers from Yunnan here so that they can build a eco-tourism industry featuring flower and pepper. And they can also combine that with the local uh, special food by enlarging and further developing this pepper industry. We can expect a great result of rural revitalization in Xiaoxian County of Anhui Province. Thank you very much, Tang Fei, for your invitation. And one day when we have a chance to go to Anhui, we will definitely go to the pepper eating competition. So thank you very much for your introduction. I wish the very best of the two provinces. So we just saw pepper and also the uh, flower breeding center, and they are expanding the industrial chain so that their agricultural products become more competitive. With science and technology, we can grow the efficiency of agriculture, and we can also increase the revenue of the locals. So the peoples living in those provinces, they are dramatically improving their income. And we have a next stop, and now let's bring you there. Hi, my name is uh, Tian Ting. I'm from Yangjiexiang of uh, Taiyuan County. Uh, what you see around you is the horticulture farmland of mine. I got this 80 mu of land in 2008, and now let's take a look at uh, the different flower types that I'm growing. I'm growing all together 12 brands, and you can see that this is a very um, particular type of uh, flower. I call this one a unicorn. Now let's uh, bring you to this uh, very popular community. You can see that the road is uh, paved and you can drive the car directly to a highway. And now let's bring you to the village. You can see that every household has the 
a new home and they also have a private car and you can see that this is very good environment uh, traditionally when a place is hosting garbage and right now it's a destination of eco tour and there are more enterprises stationed here and there's great potential for this place i hope that you can come to our village to watch the flowers to taste the flowers and also to grow flowers hi uh, i'm from uh, liu chi village i'm a, a greenhouse farmer on growing flowers you can see that i'm uh, also growing pepper So pick the uh, pepper from the uh, farmland and now you process it. But traditionally you have to rely on bare hand and you have to uh, resist the um, uh, spicy uh, juice of the pepper and your hands cannot stand it. But right now we're using a lot of machines and automation technologies. We got the pepper harvested at our home. You can see that it's very beautiful. Uh, it's golden color. If you look at the seeds, you think it's very small seeds, but you know each grab of um, the the seed is sold at 300 yuan. When everybody's building new homes, I built my home too. Now let's uh, take you on a tour to my home. You can see that I have refrigerator, I have a cupboard, I have sofa, whatever you have in your home in the city, I have here in my Zuru home. So I'm truly enjoying my life these days. I believe that the life of Liu Qi village will become better and better. Music, beer, massage. music, beer, massage. So it's not just human beings enjoying those services. If you walk into the village, you can see that the cows and oxes is there are also enjoying those services. It's not you who are. Uh, it's not just you who are enjoying the roller coaster. But right now here in this village, the oranges are also taking the roller coaster. To take a shower. You don't need to be like that. It's not just you who's enjoying the shower. Walk into the village. You will see that all those uh, flower buds, they are also taking a shower. Welcome back to our program, and this is a large um, broadcast series about walking to the village and taking a glance at the prosperous life. And this is in Gansu province, and this is one of the biggest homes in China for a particular type of uh, tulip flower. 
Since 2012, they have introduced tulip to this part of the country. They combined flower growing with uh, ecotourism, and they have formed a ecotourism industrial chain. And this is rows and rows of greenhouses. And this is Gengdian, a village in Shandong province. You can see that the cabbages are growing very well, and 70 to 80 percent of the um, farmers here are young people. Uh, since 2008, they have uh, embraced this new technology, and they have uh, cable cars and also trailers. And right now, each farmer is able to manage five to six uh, greenhouses. And this is Hulu Dao City of Liaoning Province. In 2013, and they have uh, brought this uh, smart bee uh, raising system. Uh, throughout the process, you have uh, automation technologies, and by the end of this year, we will have uh, more than 1,400 boxes of. Uh, small bee raising, and that is helping a lot of villagers increasing their income. Green grasses, uh, green grasses uh, vast land, and we are here at the grassland of Inner Mongolia. And those cows and oxes that you see are not ordinary um, breeds. Each cow can give you 300 kilos of beef, uh, which is so that uh, 4,000 yuan more than traditional uh, species of cows and oxes. And you don't need to come physically to the farmland. You can take a look at the oxes and cows on your phone. So this is a very large greenhouse, and this is 4,000 move, and they have a sensing system that can collect data and gather them in one terminal through small management. The tomatoes, they can become ripe within one week. So for each square meter, that can give you 300 kilos of harvest. Our farmers, and they don't need to go to the muddy field. And they can simply take on a cart here within the greenhouse. It's like wandering about in a supermarket. So from the traditional agriculture and transitioning to modern and automated agriculture, you can see that there, this is a drastic transformation that we have made. According to Xi Jinping, we have to rely on scientific and technological innovation if we want to modernize China's agriculture. And this transition has brought, up, brought about a lot of changes to many places in Sichuan. We have our colleague Zhang Li, who is reporting from a um, graveyard life for all of us. So I'm in Sichuan's uh, Meishan city at Gong Yi Tang. You can see that the are uh, growing grapes with a land of uh, 3,000 mu, and they are growing 48 different types of grapes from the end of June to early September, and that is the picking season for grapes. And this is the largest grape base, and this is roughly 700 mu, and you can smell the uh, fresh weight of the grape. You can see that this is a very heavy bunch of uh, grapes, and uh, this is what they call seedless grapes. And this is in purple color, and this is such a magical brand because uh, when it's just turned ripe, it's in green color, but right now it's turning purple. And this one, for example, each and every uh, grape will be turned into purple. Although they change color at different time, but when they become fully uh, ripe, they will feature the same size and same flavor. In Xinjiang, the grapes are very uh, sweet, but here in Sichuan province, that gives you a different flavor. And if I just
take one and taste it. This one is tasting like rose. It's very juicy. So that is why it's romantically called sunshine rose. Unlike the uh, purple grapes, and this one is wearing a plastic bag. It's just like people wearing clothes. With this bag, it will guard against uh, the different uh, worms. And also, there's one thing particular to this bag. You can see that at the upper part, it's a darker color, and when we go to the bottom, it's light color. And that will allow the sunshine to come in, and that will give you more uh, sweet. So grape is the economic crop, and we have to rely on this uh, greenhouse to adjust the level of water. You can see that between different greenhouses, there is a gap and there is a drainage a ditch. And this morning, it has been raining here. You can see that all the rainwater are drainaged out through this ditch. And also, we know that grape, they tend to grow faster between the temperature of 22 and 32. And that is also achieved by the greenhouse system. And this is the automation system that can automatically uh, uncover or close the lid of the greenhouse and when it uh, automatically uh, tests and senses a rain, it will close the shield. Uh, you don't need to physically go to the greenhouse to uh, do the labor work, and you can do all that on your cell phone, and it won't take more than one minute. And also within the greenhouse, you can see that there are a lot of uh, sensors, and they can measure the temperature, humidity, the content of carbon dioxide, and also the level of uh, wind gust very automatically, and that will tell you how many, uh, how much water you need to bring the, uh, to the uh, greenhouse and uh, how much uh, fertilizers you need to put on the ground. Uh, each and every year, that will give you uh, 45,000 tons of grape. In Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, residents will be able to purchase the grape from Sichuan. And the beneficiaries of this industry of course, the locals here, and they can make money by uh, leasing out their land, and they can also become workers at the uh, grape yard. And the average per capita income is uh, 30,000 yuan per year. So this is what I can tell you from this grape yard. So truly, this is uh, very futuristic and uh, all right, we have some grapes mailed to us from Meishan of Sichuan province. So this is the very uh, fresh grape, and uh, finally I've got a chance to taste that. Well, it's delicious, and it's very sweet. It's a little bit sour, and it's also you can taste this uh, fragrance just like a flower. And you can see that this is a um, pickled uh, vegetables uh, from Sichuan. And uh, from where I'm sitting, I can see there are white carrots, there are pepper, and also grapes. Well, you won't be able to see that, but let me uh, take out one grape. So this is pickled vegetables with grape in it. And this is quite astonishing for a lot of viewers, I believe. And this is just like eating hot pot. So how do you like it? Well, it's very delicious. And when you put that in your mouth, you will feel that it's very juicy. It's a little bit sore, of course, because we have carrots and also pepper. And you can taste the fragrance of the pepper as well. 
Well, I think it's a very complicated feeling, and it's sour and bitter. It's like the bitter and sweet of life. It's quite philosophical, but it's true. In Meishan of Sichuan, people see that you can put everything in this uh, pickled uh, vegetable glass. And this is extending the agriculture production chain. Uh, it's also a business card of the local village, and this is leveraging a industry of billions of RMB per year. I'm apple. I'm grape. And I'm a honey melon. I'm vegetable, but you are fruit. Well, we can be together, actually. We can be mixed together, and we'll become a business card of Sichuan. Well, let's just be different. We'll not be labeled simply as fruits or vegetable will be mixed together so everybody uh, everything here can be um, pickled and it's just a different methodology of pickling you can see that this is eggplant so it's a little bit sore but inside it, inside of it you can taste the grape So we'll mix together, and so we'll be the business card of uh, Meishan. So where are you from? I'm from Dongpo district. Where are you from? I'm also from Dongpo district. So we're from the same town. We're, uh, we are fellows from the same hometown. And this is also very suitable for pickled vegetables. And if you pickle that, it will give you a very good flavor. So we never worry about sales and marketing because we can, we have a very good sales and we can dramatically expand our scale. And my colleague is mixing the uh, cultivation nutrients and the other colleague is selecting the core and bacteria from the pickled vegetable. And after that, we're going to put that in different pickled vegetable glasses and we'll measure the safety of the food. So truly, you can put everything here. Well, this is already 21st century and we need to face all those abandoned mindsets. So right now I'm using a lot of modern technologies. I can give you the best quality of flavor and food. So, uh, spinaches, green cabbages, pumpkins, everything you can imagine, you can put it in a pickled glass Well, let's have another round of competition and now let's take a look at, at the um, big screen. And one of them is located in Jiangxi and we have a uh, cable car flying above the farmland. And here we have in Fangjiaxian village in Hubei province and this is a real transit on the ground. Truly, it's amazing why we have these two um, transportation means in the farmland. I don't know, and let's get connected to our colleagues who are stationed in Jiangxi. 
Wang Su Chang in Hezi Village, and also in Hubei Province, we have uh, Jinju that is stationed at Fang Jiashan Village. So tell us more about this uh, cable car. All right. Nice to see you. I'm in Hezi Tang. I'm in a e business operation center. You can see that those women behind me they are packaging the harvest. In Jiangxi, it has been very hot over the past few days, and they are packaging the potato, um, and then in the afternoon, big trucks will come, and that will bring the potato to other places of the country. And traditionally, it can only be sold in the head of the uh, county, but right now, it can be sold to all different places in China. So now let's take a look how they did it, and this is the smart logistic and operation center, you can see that we have many different types of cables, and they are actually robots. And these robots, they are able to transport those the agricultural products in the air to different places. And right now in Hezi town, we have six villages that are equipped with those uh, cable cars. And don't underestimate them, and they can travel at a speed of 25 kilometers per hour, and they can carry uh, more than 20 kilos of potatoes. And some of them are fully sealed, and some are half sealed. You can put a duck, you can put some other uh, type of food in the box. And it's smart. You can see that beside me, I have one staff that is operating on the computer, and he's able to control those robots to Transit in between different um, places. Uh, he can also measure the operating status of the cable car. And with this system, we are able to solve the last mile problem of uh, food transportation. You, can, you know that uh, traditionally, if you want to sell your fruits, you can only sell as a small farm. You can only sell a small quantity. But right now, we have those cable cars. Uh, you can simply bring the uh, potato to this uh, logistics center and then put them in this box. And that will be able to transport the cable uh, to directly a very large uh, logistics center. And if you place an order from your phone, uh, the product will be delivered to your doorsteps. And we are scaling up this initiative to the whole county and truly this is combining modern technology with traditional agriculture. So this is my introduction of this magical tool in Hezi Tang, and now let's uh, hand it over to my colleague in Hubei. All right, Shu Chang, thank you very much for your introduction. Now let me tell you what we have here in Fangjia village. We have uh, we have trains traveling in a forest. If you are solving the last mail issue, and we are solving the first mail issue. And this is a very famous town in China. And this is where you can see the Yangtze River flowing and winding uh, between uh, mountains. And on both sides of the Yangtze River, and there are orange trees. Exactly because of this landscape in Zigui, we are known for the high quality of oranges. This exactly because of this landscape, transportation is very difficult. You can see that the orange trees, they grow on mountain slopes, and it's several hundred meters tall in terms of altitude. And most of the orange trees are growing on mountain slopes like this, so we truly need a solution that can solve the transportation problem. So now you can see a real transit. You know, when I saw this transit, I, I, I thought this is very necessary. This is just like a ladder that can connect you from the foot of the mountain to the top of the mountain. Without the real transit, traditionally they have to rely on human labor. And this is how they do that. And first you will need a tow. What is that for? That is for uh, wiping out the sweat, of course, and you also need a very large basket, and one is not enough. You have to 
put another basket on top of that, and you need to rely on a walking stick. And this is how you walk down from the mountain top to the foot of the mountain. It's a lot of danger. It's a lot of risk, of course, and it's a lot of labor input. But with the real transit, this has changed. But the benefits go beyond that. And let me give you a brief calculation. The orange farmer has 70 to 80 mu of、uh, oranges in the harvest season. He has to hire seven to eight people to carry the oranges, and each and every day he has to pay five thousand yuan. So in one harvest season, traditionally he has to spend eighty-five thousand. But with the real transit system. He could dramatically reduce the labor cost, and he need to only hire two to three people, and that can save two thirds of the cost. Last year in 2020, the rail transit system has saved a total of 20,000 uh, uh, 20 million yuan for the local farmers.、Uh, right now,、uh, there are many.、Uh, Kilometers of rail transit, traveling on mountains. So the locals here, they are very satisfied with this system, and they have a lot of、uh, expectation for the future. Truly, this is very innovative.、Uh, cable cars traveling in the air, and railways traveling across mountains of orange trees. So both of these. Two places are known for their oranges, and may I ask both of you to tell us more about the oranges? Su Chang, would you like to go first? All right, Tian Liang. So in Ganan, the orange here features a very thin skin. It's juicy. It's nutritious, and also it's delicious. So how about you, Jingzhu? In Zigui, the orange is a little bit sour and sweet, and you can have a delicious、uh, orange throughout the different seasons of the year. All right, if you are watching here live, you can place orders right now, and you can decide what kind of orange you want. And each claim to be the best. And we talked about the transportation issues, and we talked about the orange industry. And I believe that our journalists they have more to tell us about the local industry of oranges. Shu Chang would you like to go first. All right, let me tell you Anyuan County and、uh, how the county has、uh, transformed this industry. It's blessed with very good geological conditions, and since the 1990s, it has engaged in the orange industry. In 2012, the orange production is equivalent to the equivalent to one fifth of Ganzhou Prefecture. So you can say that truly this is a very large producer of oranges. And there is a story of trans transformation. And、uh, let me、uh, start this、uh, story from this photo. And here you can see that、uh, this is the major pest of orange. It also transmits a, a disease. And in 2000, and they are growing 320,000 mu of orange. And it was in that year, and this、uh, disease transmitted by this pest. Was very prevalent, so a lot of the farmers they have to chop the orange trees, and a lot of the farmers they suffered a great deal. And this is like sounding the alarm for safety and security and quality assurance. So that is why they have brought in science and technology, and to develop the industry, they、um, brought in talents. At the county, township, and village levels, and they have、uh, research centers.、Uh, we, they actually have、uh, more than 100 technicians in one county to help the locals to develop this orange technology. 
the sweetness reaches uh, 14 degree and uh, the uh, sweet to sour ratio is uh, 14 to 5 and it's just perfect and they are also controlling the overall acre of uh, orange plantation and that is now capped at below 250,000 mu uh, that is also reducing the uh, malicious uh, environmental impact of orange plantation to uh, to environment and right now they can harvest the uh, very golden color of oranges but also the uh, preserving the eco environment and now let's watch a short video clip uh, I will show you how they are using the um, X ray to uh, measure the sweetness of the oranges so this is the control console on my hand I have a traditional sensor and later we're gonna make an ex uh, uh, experiments and we're gonna see whether the automatic uh, system can measure correctly so the orange that we put in after a measurement the switchness is 9.1 and now let's uh, use a traditional sensor and uh, just take a measure of the switchness I just need to cut it open and uh, squeeze the juice on this thing and it has to wait for like three seconds so here it shows it's 8.9 degrees so it's only 0 0.2 degrees different from the automated uh, production line so I was uh, told by the expert that uh, if the difference is within 0 0.5 degrees you cannot make a difference with your tongue or mouth so this is a automated production line that can automatically um, sort out the different oranges and uh, it has uh, 48 exits on this production line and this is sorting out the oranges according to their sweetness, their color, their type, their uh, shape, etc. So they do that to uh, perfectly sort out different types of oranges so that the high quality oranges are sold at the better price so truly this is amazing uh, you saw the demonstration in a video clip and this is actually not a technology from Anyuan locally uh, in Anyuan they have actually brought the oranges from elsewhere and uh, so uh, Jinju, tell us more about the oranges that you have there. And you told me that you have harvest throughout the year. Well, I will be uh, too cocky. After the uh, Three Gorges Dam project, uh, project and the Zigui County is like a place that is forever in spring in Xietan Tang because of its uh, a very um, a steep uh, mountain slopes it's very suitable for oranges uh, I just picked one orange from the tree and let me taste that so when you put it in your mouth it's no different from the chi orange that is grown in autumn and winter it's not that sweet you can taste a bit of sour because it contains a lot of vitamin and because in summer this is very uh, popular among the consumers because in summer we don't want to taste oranges that are too sweet so we have the natural conditions and we are also introducing a story from a position of strength and we are engaging in scientific collaboration with a technological university we are making improvements in breeds you can see that we have engineer that is transplanting the orange tree and it's actually very simple and he just took a branch from the orange tree that I tasted and he is uh, cutting the stem open 
with a slit, and he just need to put that uh, a new uh, branch there and then um, bundle that with the plastic bags, and that is very simple. So with the empowerment from technology, the cropland of uh, orange has extended, and two-thirds of the local farmers and they are relying on this particular type of oranges. And in Xietan Tang, the sales revenue is uh, more than 1.4 billion. So after listening to my introduction, let me ask you, is Jiangxi also considering of uh, growing the uh, summer orange? There's a history of growing summer oranges, but in the southern part of Jiangxi, there is a uh, winter haze, so that is why few farmers nowadays grow uh, summer oranges. But we have a lot of land that is very suitable for the plantation of uh, oranges. And we have actually uh, brought some uh, products and samples to the studios. Maybe our host can tell us more. So here we have uh, sweet potatoes. And if we talk about this uh, very uh, uh, good element, that is uh, uh, selenium. Selenium is very good for agriculture. And this is a flower. And it can also be used as a tea. So uh, luocheng flower can help protect your liver. It can also help with uh, skin care. Um, it can also help improve your uh, sleep quality. So this is the summer orange introduced by Jinju. You can see this is uh, cut open, and it's very juicy. And if I'm selling orange like an ordinary uh, orange farmer, I would squeeze this and have the juicy uh, flowing on the uh, desk of the studio. But I wouldn't do that today. Uh, let me just take a taste of this orange. And truly, this is like what Jinju has mentioned. This is this summer orange, and it's a little bit sour. It's not too sweet, and this is very suitable for people to enjoy in the summer. So I can see that Jinju truly likes this kind of uh, orange. And Jinju, uh, as you said, that uh, the orange has helped improve the local's income. And now let's uh, get connected with our journalist. And uh, Xu Chang would like to go first. Tell us how the orange industry has helped improve people's income. So well, you have to first transport the goods to other places. And this is includes the village. And this is the exhibition center. It includes the village. They have also an exhibition space on the internet. And they are leveraging internet. And last year, six point, uh, roughly a 3.4 uh, million kilos of orange uh, products have been shipped to different places of the country. And they are also relying on digital transformation in Anyuan County. And right now, there are more than 10,000 people in the e-commerce industry in Anyuan County. And last year, the total sales um, revenue reached 2 billion yuan. On the other hand, they are also building their own platforms. For example, this is a a small screen that can give you a list of the different products. For example, we have some uh, fungus and chicken and eggs advertised by the local farmers. And traditionally, you have to uh, physically carry your products to a local uh, vegetable market. But right now, they just need to uh, push the information online and then transport the product here, and then it will be transported to people's doorsteps as long as they place the order. So this is relying on a big data platform. And with this platform, the farmers, logistic enterprises, and agricultural markets, as well as consumers, they can find the information they need. For example, the logistic enterprise, they can analyze the big data and they can reduce their logistic cost. 
In addition to those hardwares, and the locals have also focused on software. They have introduced 45 sessions of trainings for e-commerce and how e-commerce is combined with agriculture. And now let's uh, show you a, a video clip about a training center of online sales of agriculture products. Through this training, I want to be able to sell products online because you know I can take care of my kids and also make some money online. Well, she looked a little bit shy when she mentioned making money. Uh, her husband is making money elsewhere, but she herself is taking care of two babies, and she wanted to go online and sell goods, but she's not good at it. Well, a lot of the times I have just one follower watching me in the uh, live streaming space, and I, you know, I got discouraged. So I, I have to learn some new skills. And Cai Yunqing used to do e-commerce, and she's always able to find the best angle of shooting a product. The photos of Cai Yunqing is well recognized by the trainer. And after the training, she came back to her own farmland and practiced with her camera. And Ye Zhenrong owns 400 mu of orange land. And last year, all the oranges were sold to e-commerce platforms. But this year, she wanted to sell directly on those platforms. So each and every day, those e-commerce platforms and sellers, they are very busy. So after a couple of days of training, they have mastered the skill. And at the very end of the day, there is an examination. So Cai Yunqing took a lot of notes. And Ye Zhongrong is uh, adding makeup on her face. And she's practicing the pronunciation in front of a mirror. The kiwi fruits contains a lot of uh, vitamin. So this is the examination, and uh, all the hard work has paid off well. Uh, she has become the best student from this training session. I believe I'm a much better uh, host in live streaming selling agricultural products. So when I was filming this, what I feel very strong is that they are very focused, they're very hardworking, and I believe that the skills that they have learned will help better sell the products in their hometown. So He Zhitang is using e-commerce to sell the product to larger cons uh, groups of consumers. So uh, Jinju, what are the techniques that the locals use in your place? Well, now let me answer your question, uh, Xu Chang. Over the past couple of days, when I was uh, interviewing, I believe that this orange can truly become a huge industry because a couple of days ago, I paid a visit to a production line and I opened my horizon. And let me tell you, from flower to fruit, from vegetable to melons, they cover everything. And the industrial chain is very big and it's covers uh, it's covering more than 100 different types of products and i have some uh, samples here for example this is the uh, orange so orange uh, meats can be made into a snack and this is a orange tea and this is quite similar to the tea that you drink and this is another drink after squeezing the juice of the oranges, and there is still some left, so we would simply make it into a jam. 
You can see that this cake contains a lot of jam that is made of orange. And now let's take a look at this one. This is a soap made of orange, and it's very fresh. We also have a uh, washing uh, uh, washing um, a product for hand wash. So uh, because of those innovation, uh, this is given the first prize in agricultural innovation in Hubei province. And because of this innovation, the local farmers they can get engaged in the agricultural production line, and they can naturally increase their income. A lot of the farmers, the uh, in this industry, and uh, each and every year, they can grow their income by more than one thousand yuan. And now let's hear what they have to say about this. There's a lot of good policies from the country, and we are even equipped with the railway in the mountains. And each and every year, we are able to make more than one hundred thousand. And uh, my children, they bought homes in the city. And me and my husband, we are growing 70 mu of land, and we are truly leading a better life. Traditionally, you have to carry 1,500 uh, kilos of oranges per day, but right now we're using machine. So these years, we have uh, technicians who come to our village on a regular basis. And there is a lot of technical guarantee for our agriculture activities. Uh, since 2019, when I embarked on e-commerce, at the time I could only sell uh, 15,000 kilos of orange. The second year I was able to sell 20,000 kilos. But right now, each year, I will be able to sell uh, 40,000 kilos of oranges. I'm raising my children, and they are studying very well in college. And now each year I could have a uh, gross uh, income of more than 100,000. I have my baby that is five years old, and he is studying at the kindergarten. Uh, he's getting older with each passing year, but our life is also getting better with each passing year. And truly, I feel very happy uh, for the locals. Over the couple of days, I have summarized, for example, the real transit has helped control the cost. And we are working together with Central China University of Technology. And that has expanded the types of oranges. And also, we have the uh, agricultural processing industry. And that is like playing a uh, multiplying effect for the local agriculture. So the agriculture, so the orange has truly become a golden source of revenue for the locals. And I feel very encouraged and I can feel the happiness of the locals. Thank you very much for bringing us the new changes from those two places. As Xinju and as one of the locals have mentioned that there are a lot of good benefits from the industry of orange and science and agriculture, uh, empowering the uh, agriculture. And uh, let's hope that the life of the locals can just be as sweet as the oranges. Music, beer, massage. It's not just you who are enjoying all this music, beer, massage. I'm also enjoying these services, walking to the villages and see the prosperous life. So it's not just you who are enjoying these services and walking to the village. You will find out that the oranges they are also taking the roller coaster.
Take a shower, you don't need to look so miserably. Not you, and not just you who are enjoying the shower. Walking to the villages, you will find out that uh, the uh, flower buds, they are also taking a shower. Welcome back to our program, and this is a large broadcasting series on walking into villages and experiencing the big changes of the local villages. In recent years, we are pushing technicians and talents to the countryside, and they have become a beautiful scenery, scenery line in the villages, and more technicians are walking into the countryside in Chongqing. They are growing vegetable and uh, raising fish all together in one fishing pond. And we have our colleague Chen Peng that is reporting from uh, Chiao Ting Village in Chongqing Municipality. So Chen Peng, we are going to hand it over to you. All right. I'm right now at Dazu District of Chongqing Municipality. In summer, the vacuum cabbage of Chongqing is very popular on people's dining tables. It's very crisp. It's also very fresh. So here you can see that this is the uh, vacuum village, uh, uh, vegetable that the locals call it. It's very fresh. So why we would grow this particular vegetable. So this vegetable is very popular here. And now let's uh, take a look at the uh, vegetables and how they are growing on the water. And you can see that we have a uh, floating box so I was told by the expert that those vegetables, they actually grow on those uh, small holes of the box. The small holes, they can fix the vegetable. It also guarantees that the vegetable absorbs nutrients from beneath. And here we have uh, more than 100 different floating boxes. And each and every day, we can harvest six, uh, 300 kilos of such vegetable. And you may wonder why we combine vegetable and fish together. So I was told by the technician in Chongqing municipality that there are two advantages. One, when you uh, raise uh, fish, you don't need to change the water. And when you raise vegetable, you don't need to uh, spray uh, fertilizers. So traditionally, when you uh, raise fish, you have to regularly change the water, particularly when it is in summer. So traditionally, we uh, inject a lot of uh, 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 we inject a lot of uh, 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 elements and some uh, chemicals to uh, clear the uh, pollutants in the water. And we are replacing that today with vegetables. And these vegetables, they can naturally clean the water and also ensure the nutrients content of the water of the water and fish pond. So that is why today, and when they raise fish in a fishing pond, they don't need to change the water. And when they raise vegetable, they don't need to spray fertilizers. And that is making the water very lucid. And also, if you look at the vegetables, and they are growing very well. In addition to the fishery industry, in this program, they are registering, for example, in this fish pond, 120,000 yuan of revenue 
alone from the vegetable. So this is uh, empowering the uh, rural revitalization campaign of the locals. So truly, this is a very good program, and you can combine vegetables and fishery all together. It's economical, it's environmental, and it's also a very good combination. It's very innovative. So innovation is a very important uh, support for rural revitalization. General Secretary Xi Jinping said that we have to constantly send agriculture technicians to the countryside. The scientific and technological engineers, uh, they have to stay true to their original aspiration to constantly serve the locals. We're sending batches and batches of engineers to the countryside, they are helping improving the life of the locals. Good morning. I'm a engineer. My name is Chen Xu. I have been engaged in the uh, house boundary industry for 36 years. In Yuzhong County, each and every year, we uh, produce uh, 600,000 tons of cabbages. Traditionally, most of that go rots in the farmland, but right now we are able to make good use of them, and that will be used as a livestock for the house boundary industry. So this is the uh, fodder that uh, we uh, produce from the uh, vegetable land, and uh, it has uh, also uh, changed the eco-environment, so the villages are turning more beautiful. My name is Yu Hongwei. I'm a agriculture engineer in Jiangsu province. I'm in a strawberry garden. You can see that this garden, after three years of development since 2018, it now covers 5,000 mu of land. And this is uh, Nong Yu. It was uh, introduced from Jiangxi province. Uh, it can turn ripe early, and it can be pushed on the market early, and it can be sold at a very good price. Now walking on this paved road, on my left hand, I have the uh, strawberry orchard. On my right hand, I have a residential neighborhood. Uh, with the strawberry industry, we can have a uh, per mu uh, economic output of 20,000 yuan. So the locals are truly living a better life today. Good morning. I'm from Yuyao city of uh, Zhejiang province. My name is uh, Wang Guoyun. I'm an agriculture technician. I've been dealing with fruits for more than 30 years. Uh, since serving as the agriculture engineer, I pay a lot of visits to orchard. So today I'm here again, and this is a rural cooperative for orchard. And this is for the plantation of pears. And over the years, they have been researching into techniques and skills, improving the production of uh, pear. So don't underestimate this structure. With this structure, we can guarantee that the pears, each and every one of them, are very juicy. And they can also uh, absorb a sufficient sunshine. So with the pear industry, our farmers are making more money. <coughs> My name is Qian Li Ming. I'm a technician for the tea garden. I have been doing that for more than uh, 20 years. And 10 years ago, I came to He Jiaping town to guide their production activities and from uh, planting, from um, tea leaves picking to processing um, on top of each and every process. In the uh, Lao Wu Chung industrial base, we are covering 3,000 mu of tea plantation, and the overall income has exceeded 20 million yuan. So dear villagers, so we have been, I have been here for more than 10 years, and how do you feel? I believe that with the help of Mr. Chen, our life is getting better. 
our pocket is becoming thicker with money uh, following Mr. Chin and growing tea, we are more confident about the future. Uh, since 2020, Leonie has initiated this uh, technical uh, engineer uh, initiative for agriculture. They are building a multi um, and disciplinary research and innovation, and they are forming a sound ecosystem where agriculture can truly empower people's uh, income increase. And uh, we have a local um, team that is uh, very popular among the locals. And now let's take a closer look. So most of the locals here grow wheat and maize. In 2012, a technician came here with a team of 10 engineers. And they came to Kazuo County. They joked at the very beginning that they were just like an architecture, an orchestra. In orchestra, you have people playing guitar and bass and piano, and they work closely together. So we are a uh, tech team, and we have to think about how to help the locals make more money. So that is why we put on the ground uh, full industrial chain trainings. We also build platforms. So they have uh, different types of fungus and mushrooms. If you name it one by one, it will be like a talk show. Uh, they have more than 2,000 different types of funguses. So those uh, engineers, they have become a selector of the species. So we bring in good funguses from all over the country. And we also bring in advanced facilities. And we do live demos, and we take uh, villagers on a tour in the uh, garden and farmland. Uh, so they're just like the saviors of these villages, and they're just like the tutors, and the uh, sometimes uh, mental instructors as well. So at one of the years, I had a loss of more than one million, and I didn't know where the problem uh, was lying. I, I was thinking of giving up on that. But I was encouraged by the technicians, and they told me, don't give up. Uh, find out the reason. And then with joint efforts, we found the reason. I expanded my uh, production um, base. And the next year, I made a lot of money. So right now, they are also shifting their uh, sales activities online. And they have become the spokespersons for the local villagers. So I can see that the um, tech corps are truly helping the locals to improve their income. Uh, for technology to empower village in Kuna, we have a technology center that is uh, giving full industrial chain services to the local rice farmers. So this is the full industrial chain service center in Shuipo County. Uh, we have only 10 staff working here, but they are serving 50,000 mu of cropland. And behind that is the power of science and technology. And you can see that we have samples of soil from different places of the county. And uh, here in this lab, we can uh, analyze the uh, quality of the soil, the elements, so based on the different soil quality, we can uh, attach them with different fertilizers. And also with the satellite remote uh, sensing technology, we are able to uh, measure the quality of plantation from above. For example, today, we found out there is something going wrong at this part of the cropland. And now let's take a look. So from our uh, satellite the image, we found out that this part of the cropland is not very normal because of the colors, because the color is different. So now if you take a look that you will see that there is the heavy drought and also there is a lot of weight and you have to uh, spray uh, pesticide and fertilizers in it and uh, you can mix the two so that it will add the nutrition of the land and also uh, guard against the pests. 
So uh, there's a lot of uh, management activities focused on pesticide and also uh, fertilizers. And traditionally, you can only manage two move of land. But right now, I'm able to manage more than 100 move of land with the modern technologies. Despite the scorching heat, the farmer is working here on this farmland on a machine. Uh, traditionally, for this vast land of uh, crops, you need hundreds of people. But right now, with these uh, breeding machines, with two people and two machines, they can uh, accomplish the target that was considered inconceivable many years ago. So this uh, equipment, the uh, testing the quality of uh, wage, with only a couple of minutes, they can measure the water density and humidity and temperature of the weights and the uh, uh, putting those weights in a stock. And with this one industrial chain, they were able to solve all the problems. So this year, the uh, uh, taking in high quality of weight. So that is why for each uh, kilo of a weight, it sold at a price that is 0 0.1 yuan higher than market average. So truly technology is helping agriculture in Qiqi Harz, Gainan County of Heilongjiang province. There is one special village, although in the northwestern part of the country and northeastern part of the country, they can speak the Shandong dialect. In 1956, uh, those um, people, they migrated from Shandong province to Qiqi Har, and they have become, they have transformed the village into the number one village in that area in terms of agriculture. And now let's walk closer to their life and their story. My name is Chen Li Yan, and they call me Madam Chen, and this villa is mine. Take a guess how much money I spend on this. I got a subsidy of 250000 and I myself only spend 90000 So this is a two-star uh, villa. And this is the tomato that I grow myself, and this is uh, beans, uh, eggplants, and pepper. I grow whatever I want. 80% of the villagers are living in villas like this. We're not envious about the uh, life in the cities because we are very confident because we are living in villas. And when my son wants to marry, we have every confidence because we are living in a villa. And uh, the Xing village is able to lead such good life. And this is the old tractor. And the party sec secretary of the village um, borrowed uh, from different households and family. We bought the first tractor of the village. The modern agriculture story of my village uh, starts with this tractor. And we are a migration village from Shandong. And our fathers and grandfathers, they came from Alinyi to Heilongjiang. Uh, with this Yimeng spirit, we took a firm uh, root in this uh, village. Each and every household, we still rely on making pancakes. The pan pancake now is a big industry in this part of the uh, village, in this part of the country. And it's a uh, green industry, and it's eco industry, and each and every village. If you go to the farmland, there are no people working there. And there are a lot of greenhouses and the nearby villages. And they, they have you know people working here. And in our greenhouse, we have 6,000 people working in the greenhouses. And traditionally, in the evening, you won't see any people on the street. But right now, we have people playing billiards, badminton. I like badminton. I want to become the best badminton player in my county. So to enjoy life, you have to play.
So she is the best player of badminton. So my goal is to overtake her. My goal is to just beat her. Well, you have a bigger size. You outside me already. So he is the champion of badminton in the whole county. So tomorrow you have to come here early, and because we have、uh, villagers from、uh, every village of the county. So tomorrow let's come early. Let's come earlier. So if you go to、uh, schools. Uh, libraries and museums, and you don't need to spend any money. So,、uh, where else can you find such life? And this is Xiao Kang. This is the moderately prosperous society that we are talking about. So we are running towards the end of this two-hour program, and we saw with real and substantial programs and examples how China has succeeded in agriculture. In farmers and also the rural areas,、uh, to revitalize the rural area, we have to rely on science and technology. And with innovation, our farmers they can deliver high-quality agricultural products. Scientific service and technical、um, empowerment. There's still a lot that we can do on this journey. Next Sunday and next Saturday. Um, please、um, tune in to our program of、uh, walking into villages again.